Welcome back. I just got back from Detroit where I was able to test drive the all new 2024 Chevy Silverado EV4 WT. That's the work truck version of the upcoming Chevy Silverado. One of the options that the vehicle has is an offboard power system, similar to that of the F-150 Lightning that I own, Ford calls it Pro Power Onboard, and Chevy just calls it the Offboard Power System. In any event, I wanted to check out that system, and I was able to grab one of GM's engineers, Chris Hamilton, to answer my questions. Now I'm going to have a full video coming up soon on my first drive impressions on the Silverado EV, but this video is specific to the Offboard Power System. I think the system's unique enough to deserve its own standalone video because a lot of people are gonna have questions about it. So I'm here with Chris Hamilton, an engineer at General Motors. We're gonna talk a little bit about the Silverado EV's off-board power system. So Chris, why don't you tell me, give me a little overview and then I'll see if I can hit you with some questions. Sure. So quick overview, we have several outlets on board on the truck. We have a six or standard or seven, seven, the stand. outlets. Yeah. So we have a 240 30 amp in the back. We also have four 110 20 amps. The center console has a 110 20 amp and the front has a 110 20. Okay. So it's seven in total, six 110s. Right. Those are on the truck with the package. It's 7.2 kilowatts mm -hmm. output of power that we can handle. Okay. And the, from what I understand, there's two banks of two 120 volt outlets that are next to the 240 volt outlet. The first outlet shares the circuit with the outlet in the e-trunk. Yep. And then the second set of two 120 volt outlets here share power with the outlet inside the cab. So if you had a whole bunch of extension cords running, yeah. you probably wouldn't want a heavy load coming from the front right. and also the first bank of two outlets because yep. you could overloaded. Yeah, you just got to right. be a little mindful. You can't have a table saw plugged into the front here and the front at the same time right. running. Yeah, you could run lights or yeah. something like that would yep, probably absolutely. be good, especially yep. LEDs. They use like nothing. Right. Okay, now if 7.2 kilowatts, that's what it comes standard with. 7.2 yes. kilowatt out, output and uh, the seven outlets. If that's not enough for you, you can add three more kilowatt of offboard power. Yep. How do you do that? So that is using our accessory power bar. This just plugs into your charge port. There's a couple different configurations for this setup. This one has four 110 20 amps on it, so you can get an additional three kilowatts usage okay. out of the truck. And that so. bumps you up to 10.2 total Correct. output, which is yep. more than F-150 Lightning's yes. maximum output of 9.6 kilowatts. Correct. Yeah, okay. And, and I'll go, and I just wanted to note, this is a regular J1772 connector and it plugs into the Silverado's charge point. I'd imagine somewhere down the road when GM transitions to uh, the NAX connector, uh, that might change. But for now, the vehicle is going to launch with J1772 and it just plugs right in and powers this. Yep. And there's, there's, as you said, different options. This video, as well as all of the videos here on State of Charge, is sponsored by QMerit. Once I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're gonna buy, then follow the link in the description of my videos and have QMerit install it. The 240 volt options, can you get different plug configurations or they, is there just one plug configuration that you get with We're that? We're still working on exactly what the implementation will be. Okay. When we release it, it's gonna come out later. Right, and pricing is not available on this option yet. Correct. Now, there's also another offboard power option that you can get with the silver and that's a vehicle to vehicle uh charging yep. cable which would have the uh, j1772 connector on both ends correct and um how much power can that offer? so that one can do six kilowatts okay so that's your vehicle to vehicle it's 25 amp capacity right and so. it, it's that's important to note because the way that the offboard power, from what I understand, works on the Silverado EV is the Silverado EV comes with portable charging cable. It's 240 volts. It's a 32 amp dual voltage charger. Yes. But this can only put out 30 amps. So if even if you bought an adapter that, that can plug into this and mm -hmm. then plug into the NEMA 1450 from the yep. portable charging cable, it won't work because it'll overdraw this Correct. circuit. Yep. So um, if you wanted to use, if you wanted to charge another electric vehicle from the existing outlet that's in Silverado EV, you'd need to have a uh, uh, 
either charge at 120 very slowly or right. get an, a, a portable charging cable that draws less than 32 amps. Yep. There's ones on the market that have 16 amps, 24 amps. Um, yeah. so, you know, so you'd be able to do that. That makes it a really good solution for how we can manage that vehicle to vehicle. Without, Absolutely. Like you're saying, pulling yeah. other chargers, adapters. And is there any, um, uh, say, insight to when the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle cable might be available this year, next year? Because I know it's not available just yet, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. So all that, that timing and everything, it's still in the works along with the box. Okay. All right. So I'm at a job site and I want to power um, my tools. Mm -hmm. Do I have to leave the truck running? So when, you're, when the truck is running, you're in propulsion, the outlets are always active. Uh -huh. The, park even and driving down the road, side. the outlets are always active. The accessory power bar can only be used in park okay. because now you're plugged into the charge port, we lock you out from shifting. Mm -hmm. If you want to use it in off, so you have your HVAC off, your lights off and everything. Yeah, I'm parked at a job site somewhere. Right, you get there, you want it to run your outlets for eight hours. Mm -hmm. We have an app in the infotainment where you can select to have the power base app on and then you can have it on indefinitely. You can set it to a specific state of charge. So if you know you need 20% to get home, you can have it shut off at 20% so you know you can get home. If you want it to only run for two hours, you can set it to only run for two hours. And okay. it'll run for that time and then shut off when you reach the limit. Right. And this has, a, the, the Silverado EV has a very big battery. This is the yes. 4WT, which has an EPA range rated uh, range rating of 450 miles, Correct. enormous. Yes. So it has the, the battery packs over 200 kilowatt hours. GM hasn't released the exact size of it, but I'm gonna assume it's the same size as Hummer EV, which they have said was 205 kilowatt hour of usable energy. Um, so you think about the amount of uh, energy you have stored, if the truck's fully charged, you could run literally all of the tools here on a job site. Yes. You know, you could run the 10 uh, kilowatt max for 20 hours yeah. would be, be would be time. 200 kilowatt hour, you know, yeah. and, and you'd never be really using right. the full power. So if you, let's say you were running air compressors, you know, power table saws, uh, you know, all kind of equipment, you could probably literally run it for a couple of days, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, people yeah. work eight hour days, right. <laughs> you so, know, you, you could probably run three days. Do you right. have any estimates on how long things run or things like that? So I know the released figures, 21 days for essential items. This truck, for a live example, it arrived on Tuesday morning. We started using it for the power base demos. Last night, we powered the food trucks that fed us. It's a taco truck and a barbecue truck. I believe it's dropped 5%. Mm -hmm. So we're on going into day three. Yeah. So and it's used 5% it, of the pack. During power outages, you can probably run a bunch of extension cords and run the essentials in yep. your home, We've like refrigerators it. and things like that. Yep. Yeah, now I know, I know Jim's working on like Ford has the intelligent backup power system. I know if Jim's working on that also, you're going to yep. release that at a later date where the vehicle is going to be able to integrate and automatically power your house during a power outage. But that's Correct. not available just yet. We'll do some work on that in the future yep. for sure. Time's I've already coming. reached out to GM and I want to uh, have a video on, on that when that's available to do. But for now, even people that launch, get the vehicle at the launch, they will be able to run a bunch of extension cords yes. and, and, and power their home for quite a long time yes, it's, uh, during a power outage. I mean, you're talking amazing. about the Lightning's extended range battery pack is 131 kilowatts hour usable. Mm -hmm. This is more than 200 kilowatt hour usable. So yeah. you think about how much extra energy you have and how much longer you could go during a crisis. Right. So good job. And yep. with the range buffer, because we have that 450 range, you're not as worried about using most of the pack on a job site. If you do have to run a table saw, chop saw, air compressor all day long, mm -hmm. you can use that and you know you can still get home or to a charge stop. Excellent. Listen, thanks yeah. a lot. I appreciate yeah. you coming on and uh, looking forward to seeing the other future accessories, the vehicle to vehicle charging and uh, the home integration power system, all this. I think it's great what you guys are doing here with the Silver Auto EV. I think that's going to make a great work yeah. truck. For sure. Thanks, thanks a lot. And there's one last thing Chris and I forgot to go over. When you go inside the truck, you can see the amount of power that the system is offloading and it breaks it down between the outlets that have the maximum output of 7.2 kilowatt and if you have the power bar plugged in, which can add an additional three kilowatt. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming news and reviews here on State of Charge and keep an eye out for my Silverado EV 
first drive review video. That should be coming out within a week or so. And as always, thanks for watching.